What's good guys? What's good with y'all, man? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you aren't new, hit the notification bell so you're notified every time a video goes live, man. And uh, just a disclaimer, guys, I know y'all see the title of the video. This is my reaction to somebody who made a video with this title. And um, I wanted to bring some light to it, bro. Have not watched it, it's a 10 minute video. I'm guessing this guy didn't have any more content to put out or he's a Luca hater or something, man. But uh, we're gonna be reacting to his video. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what he has to say. And hopefully I don't spaz, which I probably will just by the title of this video, man. But uh, hey, guys, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. School has been killing me, but I'm trying to stay consistent, you know, on my breaks. I'll come into here, I'll come in this room and I'll make a video for you guys just so that while I'm studying, I could, you know, edit on my break or something and try to stay consistent before the um, the playoffs start again. But I saw this video and I just had to, I had to see what, what, what this man was thinking about, bro. Like he had to run out of ideas. He had to, that's, that's the only explanation I have for somebody putting out this video, bro. Like the dislikes and like ratio, has 900 likes and 800 dislikes. Almost 900 dislikes. So a lot of people didn't agree with it. I'm not gonna read the comments. We can possibly read the comments afterwards. Um, but anyways, man, let's get to the video. Hopefully you guys don't enjoy this video. Don't enjoy it. I mean, you can enjoy my part, but don't enjoy this one for, what that, for whatever reason this man said. So we're gonna get into it. And uh, like I said, hopefully I don't spaz out on the guy. In the NBA with possibly the brightest future. He started his career playing professional basketball overseas at, at the age of only 16. After taking over the Euro League, Doncic declared for the NBA draft, where many thought that he would end up being a bust. Despite this, Doncic was still drafted third overall by the Atlanta Hawks, but was traded. He should have been first. I'm not gonna lie. Shortly after, the Dallas Mavericks, where he still plays today. From the beginning of his career with the Mavericks, Doncic has completely taken the lead by storm. In his first season, he won Rookie of the Year in what was one of the most difficult years to bring the trophy home, going against competition like Trey Young. In his second season, Doncic has continued his domination of the NBA and even managed to improve his already impressive rookie season. Early in the year, Doncic was nearly a front runner for the most valuable player, which is almost unheard of from a player of his age. Yes, sir. Despite all of the early thing is, how can you go from saying all of this about a player and then make a title like he won't last long in the NBA? Like success that Doncic has had so early in his career, some fans and analysts still believe that he will still turn out to be a bust and will not last long in the NBA. This was not the view that it, we had taken up here at Up Next Sports. However, today we'll be looking at some of the arguments people are making as to why Doncic will not last long in the NBA and judge. Okay, maybe it's not him. He said we're going to look at some arguments. So maybe it's not him. So How valid each argument is. One of the biggest detractors from Luka's game is his lack of defense, and some think that as he ages and his offensive game begins to regress, his lack of defense will kick him out of the league earlier than many think. This is the worst facet of Luka's game. However, he's a 6'7 point guard who can and does rely on their height and size to carry their defensive game. A possible explanation as to why Luka does struggle on the defensive side of the ball is that he has to do so much for the young Mavericks team offensively. With the team's second star, Kristaps Porzingis, being injured for majority of the season, the entire weight of carrying the offense has been on the back of young Doncic. It's possible that as the team continues to prove and less of the offense responsibilities fall onto the big shoulders of Doncic, he will begin to shine as a good defender as he does have the size to be one of the better defenders in the league. However, if his defensive game does not begin to improve, it leaves him almost useless for the Mavericks if he's having an off shooting night. Almost useless. Now let's talk about that for a minute. His defensive game is not the best. We can all be honest about that. But you can't admit that the talent in the NBA is more, I wouldn't say superior, but there's better talent in the NBA compared to the Euro League. Not saying the Euro League doesn't have great talent, because they do. But compared to the NBA, it's just the the gameplay is faster, people are, are stronger, uh, quicker. 
things of that nature. So when you're switching from Euro League to NBA, yes, it's going to be very tough for you if you already didn't have good defense to come out and play against players like LeBron and Devin Booker and Kimba Walker and guard those players. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to guard like a player like Kyrie because you haven't played anybody like Kyrie over there in uh, the Euro League. So that... That, that's a given, bro. His defense isn't the best, but saying he's useless, you know what I'm saying? That's that's ridiculous. It's kind of like the James Harden effect, bro. Like, you do so much on offense that you're, you're tired by the time you get on defense, you know? Or you get tired more quickly than your teammates. So, I don't see anything wrong with that. His defense isn't crazy. He doesn't let his opponents, you know, score 30 on him every single night. He does get, you know, blown by a lot, but... Not a lot, but a good amount of times. But hey, he's not he's not the quickest player. I'm not expecting Luca to to guard a Kimba Walker consistently. That's not what I do. You know what I'm saying? Luckily for Dallas, those nights are few and far between. But as Luca begins to continue to age and teams figure out how to better defend against him, he may have to better round out his skill set to make a more unstoppable form. Of like it's gonna his defense is gonna come with him playing more in the NBA. Like y'all know what I'm saying, bro. If he does continue to neglect the defensive side of the ball, however, he may find his way back to the Euro League much sooner than anyone would no, expect. No, that's, that's the ridiculous. The point made by those who believe Luka will not last long in the NBA is that he lacks athleticism to remain in the league for a substantial amount of time. Luka, while being I'm going to finish talking before I talk. League, does lack the athleticism that we see from players like LeBron James and Russell Westbrook. However, he's crafty enough and a skilled enough shooter to find a way to put the ball in the basket. The thought process on this argument is that he can only be crafty for so long and eventually the whole league will be aware of and know how to guard every move in Luka's bag of tricks. That's what they thought about Manu. But guess what? Manu was still putting up crazy, crafty moves at 37. This I'm not trying to hear it. This athleticism also ties into the last point made and is one of the main reasons that Luka struggles on defense. There is really no way for him to learn or acquire athleticism as a result of this. As he continues to age, he'll be limited to only a shooter as his game in the paint will become almost obsolete. To refute this point, however, we've seen many other players who are not the most athletic that had continued to have success and went on to even have Hall of Fame careers in the NBA. Some of the example players that first come to mind are James Harden, Dirk Nowitzki, Mano Ginobili, all of which, while were not the most athletic players, even in their primes, they were still crafty enough and patented signature moves to get around defenders and finish the basket. For Mano and Dirk, even as they were in their late 30s. Bro, guys, what did I just say? This is making it seem like I've already watched the video, bro. I'm just, hey, I'm there, bro. But going off his point about lax athleticism, you don't have to be athletic to score. You don't have to be athletic to be one of the top players in the league, bro. You just have to know your game. You have to know what your strong suits are and stick to those. And know the the person that's guarding you disadvantage and kill them every single time. That's it, bro. You don't have to be a freaking LeBron James. Lucas already perfected in his two seasons in the NBA. Along with this, it's likely that his jump shooting will continue to improve as his career progresses. As far as this argument goes... Hold on, I gotta make sure I'm still recording, guys. Uh. I don't believe that his lack of athleticism in terms of affecting his offensive game will be enough to cause Luka to leave the NBA anytime soon. Yeah, not at all. The argument as to why Luka will not last long is that he's too ball dominant of a player. Looking at this season, he has a usage rate of 37%, which is very high. A usage rate percentage shows the percentage of team plays is run for a player while they're on the floor. In comparison, LeBron James' highest career usage rate is only 33.8%. This highlights just how much Luka has the ball in his hands. As a result, it's possible that the amount of usage from a player could be the cause for their early injuries in their career, which could cause off his career early. Along with this, if he has a usage rate like this throughout the remainder of his career, he could end up being seen as a ball hog and a player that will not be able to bring on other star players to Dallas to play with him. As a result of this, there's a possibility that Luca's career path could end up looking more like Carmelo Anthony's, Allen Iverson's, or at worst, Steve Francis's, rather than the player that he's been compared to most frequently since he burst into the scene. Bro. <sighs> Ball dominant players are in the NBA and have been in the NBA for years. Just name a couple Kimba Walker and Chris Paul. Do people still want to play with Chris Paul? Yes. People still want to play with Kimba? Yes. Are those players at the top of some PG's 
some of their favorite point guards of uh, this current era? Yes. Bro, Luka has to have the ball in his hands because he's the one that makes the best decisions on his team. That's simple and plain. When Luka's not on the floor, do you see the crafty passes, the... I know some people think of no look passes as, as like flashy, but bro, it it gets the defense to think one thing and gets people open, bro. Like I feel like the Mavs move better with Luca out there. Not sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. It, it's kind of a love hate because y'all know when uh, Luca was out for a while, it did seem like the Mavs were moving the ball a little bit better. Um, but at the end of the day, that's your best player on the team. You're going to want the ball in his hands regardless. You know what I'm saying? Um, people are going to say the same thing about Kobe. R.I.P. Mamba. But uh, he needs the ball in his hands. But he got the job done, bro. People wanted to play with Kobe. Well, it's true that this season, Luka does have an astronomical usage rate. There are some factors at play that could explain why this occurred. The first is the second option on offense. Kristaps was injured for a good part of the season, meaning that Luka was basically the only player who could do damage on offense. Another is that Luka is the team's point guard, meaning that he'll be bringing the ball up the court on most possessions. As a result of this, it makes it much easier for the team to go right into a play for Luka if the ball's already in his hands. And if Luka is calling the plays as the point guard, it would not be hard to call your own number as much as possible, especially if you're putting up the numbers that he had this season. Exactly, bro. Why would you not keep trying to score if you're killing everybody? When Some of these arguments are the silly, Mavericks bro. Acquire another young star. It'll be interesting to see if Luca will be able to give control of the ball and let his usage rate fall. If this cannot happen, it's possible that he'll be branded as a ball hog and not a team player. And if I don't think he'll be branded as a ball hog. Enough, it's possible that he could be out of the league sooner than anyone thinks. From the moment that Luca was traded in the 2018 NBA draft, he would already be set up to be compared to players who would to end up being one of the best young stars in the league. The media has hyped this rivalry up through the rookie season to today and will likely continue to be compared to Young and Young compared to him throughout their career. After Doncic beat out Young in the Rookie of the Year award, he seemingly defeated and outgrew the Trey Young comparison. However, after he came out of his hot start in the 2019-2020 season, he would obtain the ultimate comparison that a young player can make yeah, and LeBron. Be compared to LeBron James. Hey. Well, it seems like Luca will do his best to fill James's shoes and seems to be of an old school mindset of beating the best to become the best. This is still a lot of pressure on such a young player, as we've seen. I hope it's not too loud, guys. Pressure can become too much and will crush the player's spirits and confidence if they cannot fill the shoes they're compared to and will be left as a shell of a player that they once were. However, it seems like Luca does not mind the media attention, scrutiny, or hype influencing him too much in either direction. As a result of this, I believe he's mature enough to handle these comparisons, and instead of letting it tear him down, he'll use them as motivation. He'll be chasing after LeBron James for the rest of his career. The next argument is a bit outdated. However, this is one of the main points as to why fans started their analysis and advised teams to avoid drafting Doncic in the 2018 draft. The reason being that is he is from Europe and did not play college in basketball in the NCAA. Who cares? Often, when looking at draft prospects having experience of playing professional overseas, it's looked down on when compared to playing in the NCAA. Despite those players playing overseas are playing against grown men who have made their livelihood playing basketball <laughs> rather than collegiate athletes. There's been a long history of players being drafted ahead of where they were. They, in rest respect, should have been in the draft. However, as of now, it appears that this is definitely not the case for Luca. As of now, he is the best player in the draft, and each year the stigma of European players being at risk, inferior or project players, are becoming less and less widely agreed upon and accepted. Some former overseas greats who have shut down the stigma are Mono Ginobili, Luca's former teammate Dirk Nowitzki. And Tony Parker, yep. just in a few. Today, Luca is carrying on the torch from former grades to keep the names of all European players in good graces. While Luca, being from Europe, would have prevented him from being a star he is today and possibly even caused him to be out of the league shortly into his career. In the year 2020, once they prove themselves in the league, European players are given all of the influence and power that American players do. The final argument as to why. But on that, I would like to say that I don't know why your players or European players are looked down upon. Um, I can see where they get the idea from just because it's probably not as intense as, you know, playing against the best players in the U.S. But like you said, bro, you're playing grown men. Luke has been playing grown men since 
he was first a teenager, bro. So of course he's gonna have the IQ, uh, the leadership abilities to lead a team in the NBA, bro. Like every owner is looking back on that draft and kicking themselves because they didn't draft this guy right here, bro. You know how much of the asset he would be to a team? I know the Kings wish they could have their pick. Was it the Kings? I'm not sure, but <laughs> that's tough, man. Whoever whoever the two teams that picked before him, say goodbye. Oh, Come on, man. the Suns are kicking themselves. Simple. They need a point guard, too. Right next to Devin Booker. That would have been great. But I'm glad he came to Dallas. Last long in the NBA. So the fact that he already has a lot of basketball miles on his body at such a young age. Luke has been playing professional basketball since he was only 16. The years Hawks old. are kicking themselves too. His peers in his draft class who were only in their second year of high school at the time. As a result of this, while playing professional overseas has done wonders in developing the young stars game. It has also led to him playing many more games in minutes than most, if not all of his peers. And because of this, it's possible that he could be more suspect to injury or his body shutting down early and no. forces him to retire early as well. You just gotta take care of your body, bro. You take care of your body, you'll be straight. While Luka doesn't have any major injuries to date, long-term stress of playing basketball in the body has, as we've seen time and time again, wear down on the knees and other joints of players. So even though it's very unlikely that injuries will plague the young star anytime soon, there is a chance that a lifetime of wear and tear on his body could lead to him retiring from the That's NBA with everybody, though, bro. Nobody put that straight on Luka. This, out of all the arguments, in my opinion, is the most likely reason to push Luka out of the league early. Although his game, as of now, is much more offensively oriented and leaves a lot to be desired on defense, he's still one of the best players in the league, and he's only in his second season in the NBA. To conclude, as of now, it appears as if nothing could slow down Luka from the Hall of Fame career he seems to be destined for. However, some believe that as a result of his lack of defense and athleticism, being ball dominant, having lofty comparisons, a European bias in the NBA, and wear and tear on his body, he'll soon be out of the league. Subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. I thought I was going to have to come for the dude, bro. But uh, those weren't his his uh, thoughts, I guess. Those are people, what pe other people say. So we're going to look at these these comments, bro. Uh, let's see. He said, hey, all, just to clarify, we are not saying Luca's over. We are breaking down what fans and other analysts are saying that could end Luca's career. Watch the full video before getting upset, please. We love Luca. All right, shout out, shout out to him, then. But, uh... It's a tough video to make, bro. He said, bro, he's not going to leave the NBA unless his skill falls off a cliff. He is one of the best, or if not the best, young players in the league. He is the best player, best young player in the league, and I'll hang my hat on that, you feel me? Useless, lol, he's going to dominate for years. He will dominate for years, hey. I might have to give these a like, simple. This is, this is my school account, so. Uh, whenever a white player starts balling, people feel threatened. Hey. Might be going somewhere with that one, TJ. If he is white, unathletic, he can't be great in the NBA. That's what people think because they don't watch EuroLeague. That's facts. A lot of people that talk down on EuroLeague don't even watch EuroLeague basketball, bro. Um, but I think we're already like past 10 minutes. The, the video is 10 minutes and I did pause a lot. So, um, hey, if you guys agree with me, leave a like on this video. Like I said, bro, please don't leave a dislike. I do not agree with this. I just wanted to see what he had to say and basically throw it away. You know what I'm saying? Um, but hey, consistent Dewan in the building. I love you guys. Please continue to watch my videos, like it, so more people can be subscribing. Hey, all of my new subscribers, bro, I've been getting a lot recently since I started uploading again. I appreciate you guys for um, sticking around and uh, clicking that subscribe button, bro. You know what I'm saying? I think it's a cool channel. Y'all can agree or disagree, but hey, I'll see you guys on the next video. Leave some lit videos down in the comment section, man. And uh, I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'm out, bro.